Going down then to John 17, 1 and 2, um, this person suggested that uh, this passage implies that Jesus only died for the church. So these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So, of course, it raises the question, in what sense and how is the decision made for the Father to give um, the elect to the Son? But that's another question which the Calvinist makes assumptions on. However, even if that is the case, that Jesus died for the elect, does it mean that he didn't die for the world? Well, let's look at John 17, 20, same chapter. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So, suggesting that this group here, um, the uh, disciples and those given to Jesus, does not include everyone, would mean that others could not believe. So, I'm going to say that that actually puts the cross here up by the world because Jesus is praying for all those who would believe through their word. John 17, verses 6, 9, 11, and 24. These are all essentially the same idea, so I lumped them together. So we're going to 6, first of all. Um, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, says Jesus. At this point in time, he was not praying for the world at that moment, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep them. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And in verse 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that thou mayest behold my, that they mayest behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. So the thing that each one of these verses have in common is that they were given to Jesus by the Father. So uh, this phrase, thou hast given me, them whom thou hast given me, appears in each one of these verses. So on the assumption that therefore, the cross must be limited and the Father only gave those ones through some arbitrary selection process hidden to man, the Calvinist suggests that Jesus only died for the elect. However, we have John 17, 21 in the same chapter, which says that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Why? that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So here, the Calvinist wants to always point out that Jesus wasn't praying for the world earlier on in this prayer, but here we have in John 17, 21, that he is indeed concerned that the world would believe that the Father sent Jesus into the world. Why would he care about that if he didn't provide atonement for the world? That makes no sense at all. So this was the first set of verses that this Calvinist person brought to the table trying to suggest that God actually didn't want to have Jesus uh, save the world and pay for the sins of the world only for the elect. And we can see in each one of those uh, passages selected, often in the same chapter, sometimes the very next verse, we see that the point the Calvinist is trying to make to limit the work of Jesus and to limit the identity of Jesus as Savior of the world, we can see that it's contradicted by the Bible in the very same chapter, in, in many cases, 